Yo! What's going on? I like that, Matt. Diligent? I like that. I'm not as prodigy, though. I want to make that very clear. How's everybody doing? How are we doing tonight? Good. Yeah? Good. Well, I'm so pumped to be here. Week two of our parable series. You know, week one was great. Alex talked about salt and light. Uh, and I'm pumped to be up here. You know, I don't get up to get up here a whole lot, so I wanted to use this time wisely and just share a little bit about myself. A little fun fact about me is I'm a hobbies guy. Anybody a hobby person? You got hobbies? Oh, all right. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me hear some, yeah. I like golf. I like doing pictures. Oh, that's awesome. What else? Give me another hobby. Who's got something good here? Paint by numbers. Paint by numbers. Um... I don't know about that one. I'm just kidding. Guys, I'm a, I'm a hobbies guy. I have several different hobbies. Matt actually kind of stole my intro talking about my hobbies. Uh, the first one I do is I play guitar. Guys, that is the sickest photo of me in existence, for one. I don't usually look that cool. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not being very humble up here. But uh, yeah, I, I love playing guitar. It's, it's an awesome hobby of mine, a passion of mine. Another thing that I love to do is work out. I know you're probably wondering, Mitch, where do you work out? Orange Theory. Yeah. And now, I know you're also probably thinking, Mitch, isn't that just for women? Like, don't women just work out there? To that, I would say you're absolutely right. And I stick out like a sore thumb. And then my third one, the third hobby I wanted to talk to you about is actually something that I just learned about myself. If you have been coming to Stumo, you probably have heard Matt Smith speak. He talks about this almost every talk he gives. And, and I just learned that uh, he must think that one of my hobbies is collecting trucks. I just had to buy an F-150 recently, and um, I think he thinks that I'm just stashing a bunch at our house. But no, guys, if I had to nail <laughs> he is. If I had to nail down what my actual favorite hobby is, I would definitely say it's building things. Uh, it's building things. There's something about putting the pencil behind your ear unnecessarily, you know, just to look cool. You're not using it for anything, but you know, if you're building something, it's got to be there. You're covered in sawdust, but you're not going to wipe it off because you know you look sick, guys. Come on, I know you know what I'm talking about. You got to talk to me. Amen. Come on, something here, guys. <laughs> but no, I, I love building stuff because it's the process of seeing something come together uh, for a final product. You know, it's those steps of putting something together. Uh, some of the cooler things that I built, this is show and tell a little bit, but some of the cooler things I built is a conference table for our office. I don't know if many of you guys have seen it, but it's this nine foot by six foot conference table. You can see uh, we got Taylor sits there and then Matt sits there. It's kind of a power struggle right now. We're working on that. Uh, but <laughs> building that was awesome. It was a, a huge undertaking. The second thing is this Stumo sign. Uh, again, a lot of the things I do revolve around Stumo, uh, as you probably could tell. I spent 18 hours one weekend wood burning this stupid little dots that you do to, to make the letters appear on that. And that was super awesome. The last one I'm probably the most proud about. And I know you're looking at that, you're like, what? What is that? That looks like a pallet for shipping container. I don't know. Uh, it's actually Matt's bed. Uh, I built Matt a bed. When I moved in, he said we were roommates. When I moved in, I saw that he just had a mattress lying on the floor. And I was like, Matt, I like to, I like to build things. I could probably make that like an inch higher off the ground if you really want that. And he was like, sure, let's do it. And look, and now Matt has a bed. <laughs> But guys, I've always loved building stuff. Like it's always been something I did even as a kid. Uh, my table journey, we'll call it, uh, started when I was really young. Uh, as you can see, this is me. Yeah, I love that, the Oz. Um, <laughs> uh, it was a very aesthetic choice to just pick the pieces of firewood and then just a nice thin sheet of scrap wood right on top. Uh, as you can see, I'm holding the, the hatchet right at my face, so I'm not sure <laughs> where my mom was. My dad must have taken that photo. Uh, the second one, the second one's a little more extreme. It's me going off a ramp I built on my tricycle. And I wish my mom had like taken the photo a, a few seconds later because I threw like a, a sick 360 off the ramp, but you'll just have to take my word for it, I guess, on that one. Uh, this other one is just another photo of me building something. I have no idea what we're building there, but um, the main point is I liked building things as a kid. Uh, this next one, don't worry, this isn't gonna go on for too long, I promise. <laughs> this next one, if you look at that, you're like, oh, that's sick. Mitch was building a wooden tank. And I would say, no, you're wrong. We were building a go-kart, but I don't think anyone told us what a go-kart was. Because really, this was just a tetanus death trap on wheels for my sister. 
Um, as you can see, this was the inaugural run. I'm going to push her down the, our sloped driveway. Uh, she's got her helmet on, which is great, but I don't know why we added these aesthetic knife blade looking things. So if there's no seat belt in that thing. So if that thing came to a stop, she was just going straight into that. But uh, guys, I share all these things because when it comes to building something, you always have to kind of ponder the question as you start the project, is this something that is gonna last? You know, is this something that is going to last after I build it. I can guarantee you that this did not last very long. I wanna show you a picture of my sister's face after we did the initial push, that's sheer fear. But guys, we need to think about whether or not the things we build will last. Let's think about the great pyramids in Egypt or, or the Great Wall of China. Uh, these were built 4,000 and 2,000 years ago and yet they've stood the test of time. Uh, those are things that were built to last. And it's interesting when we think about uh, the Bible, Jesus actually talks about this idea in the passage we're going to be looking at tonight. Uh, and through that, he shows us that we really need to build our lives on the things that last. And so tonight, I want to give you guys three truths that Jesus shows us in the parable of the wise and foolish builders. So check this out with me. Matthew 7, verse 24 through 27, it says this. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So guys, just to give us some context of where we're at in Scripture right now, this is Matthew chapter 7, it's the very end of the Sermon on the Mount, which is arguably the most famous and important sermon in all of history given by Jesus. You know, he's, he's wrapping this thing up. I can just picture the worship pastors in the back, like tapping the wrap-up the wrap music so that everybody in the crowd knows how to get to his point and, and finish up. Uh, but he's looking out. I picture Jesus looking out at thousands of people listening to him and thinking, man, I got I to gotta really hammer home what we've just taught. So what he does is he casts this, this story about these two responses, two responses to what he has just said to everybody, how they could, they could respond to what God's word had gone out as. And based on those two responses, there are two very different outcomes. There's two outcomes uh, based on how the response is, and, and then he emphasizes why it is so critical that we build our life on what lasts. And so the first truth I'm going to give you guys from the parable is the fact that we are all builders. We are all builders. Not just like conference table or, or go-kart builders, but like actual builders, you know. Um, so check out with me verse 24 and 26. It says this, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And then the foolish one, everyone who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. See, Jesus is telling us here that we are all builders. We are builders of our lives. And I'm not sure this is something like you've thought of before. Like no one just thinks like, oh, I'm a builder of my life. Like we, we don't typically think of that. But the reality is when we choose everything we do in our daily life, whether that's how we spend time, how we talk, uh, what we dress as, what we, what we say to our other people, we are essentially putting pieces into this building blocks, into this bigger picture, into our house or, or who we are as a person. And so when we think of this, it's, it's kind of easy in a lot of places in the Bible to, to want to side with like the good guy or the smart guy. Like I know when I first read this, when I was first reading this uh, for the first time, I, I thought like, dude, I'm, I'm like the wise builder, you know, like I, I spend, I spend my life pretty well. Like I, I do things well. I, I'm in a good major. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm spending the right amount of time with people on the weekend. I'm not doing anything too crazy. Um, but I want to just challenge us, if that's you, to think about the bigger picture that Jesus is, is talking about here, the bigger picture that he's painting in this story. And so I want to back up and look at bo both builders. What we see is that both builders built a house. And I, I know that's kind of obvious, uh, but it's important to notice that they didn't just like start and kind of try building a house, but they succeeded in building their house. You know, we see that um, they both had equal opportunity as builders of their houses. They, they probably had similar resources, similar skill sets. And I, you know, I like to picture that they built some pretty nice houses. Like I'm a, I'm a rugged, modern, aesthetic guy. You probably can tell that by just looking at me, but this is, this is kind of what I picture their houses looking like, you know? 
you got a Colorado mountain home that's looking like that. We got angular roof, lots of natural lighting, exposed brick, exposed wood. Guys, that is a good looking house. I think that that is what these builders built. And the same is true when we think about how we build our lives, right? You know, we can build up some grand things in our life. We can, we can build up a, a very popular image. You know, we can look really good in front of other people. We, we might look very successful in school or, or financially well off. And it makes it easy for us to look just at the outside at other people. I know for myself, that's something that, that I've felt just looking at other people and, and comparing or envying what they have based on the house that they've built or the life that they've built. But again, this passage, it's important to look at not just what Jesus is saying, but what he's not saying. You know, Jesus isn't saying like the details on the house. He's not giving the square footage or the, the size of these houses. But what he does emphasize is the foundation, right? We see this, that the builders both built on different foundations. We see that the wise builder built on a foundation. I'm sorry, that wasn't supposed to be up there. Um, thank you for catching that. The wise builder built on a foundation of rock. And then the, the foolish builder built on a foundation of sand. Uh, I love what Luke's account says in Luke chapter 6. It's, it's the same story told in a different account. Uh, it talks about the wise builder being someone who built a house and dug down deep to lay a foundation on the rock. Whereas the foolish builder was one who, who built his house on a ground with no foundation. Like think about what this is saying. You know, the the wise builder took great effort to lay his foundation on something solid, something that's unmovable, whereas the the foolish builder really just kind of slapped up a house wherever. It might have looked great, but he just slapped it up without thinking about the foundation. This is a sand dune. Do we have any sand dune aficionados? No. If that's what you would consider an aficionado, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you guys about sand dunes tonight. Something you probably don't know about sand dunes is that they can get upwards of 800 feet tall. Like, I don't know if you can see this, but these are camels walking up this sand dune. Like, this is not some, like, little hill you're just going to walk over. This is like a giant sand dune. Uh, and what's crazy, even how big they can get, what's crazier is the fact that over the course of a year, they can shift across the desert 8 to 12 feet. Whoa, Mitch, that's crazy. You're right, that is crazy. That's like looking out at the front range over the course of your time in college, it's moved an entire block. Like, that's nuts to think about. Sand is not something you would want as your foundation. Sand is not something that you would want as a foundation. You know, it's not something that lasts, it's temporary. And there's a reason that Jesus uses this when he talks about what the foolish builder built his house on. You know, no one, again, no one is looking at this parable of being like, Mitch, I just want to be like the foolish builder, man. Like, I, I want to build on the sand. Like, I want to do it. No one's doing that. Not, not even the foolish builder. He wasn't like, I really want to build on sand because it's temporary. No, the biggest mistake isn't choosing to build on a bad foundation, but the biggest mistake is neglecting to think of the foundation at all. And I want you guys to, to sit on that for a second. The biggest mistake is choosing to not think about a foundation at all. And you know, as, as far as what does this look like, what does it look like to build our foundation uh, on sand? You know, I, I think of it as this. I think of putting all of our weight, all of our purpose into the temporary things of life. You know, they might be good things, but when we put all of our foundation, all of our, our drive on these things, they're ultimately going to let us down because they're temporary. You know, this could look like having success in school, uh, whether or not I'm popular amongst my friends or or this relationship that I'm in, uh, or or if I'm financially stable, like those are good things, but they're not always solid or or, or permanent. They're temporary things in life. And so when we're building our lives on sand, we're putting all of our weight or our lives on the temporary things of this world. We need to be wise and build our life on what lasts. So the first truth we're learning is uh, that we are all builders. Now, the second truth that we're learning from this parable is the fact that we will all face storms. Bet you didn't think I was going there. Well, we're going there, baby. Um, guys, let's look at, let's look at the, the, the verse here. We see that not only the wise, but also the foolish builder has the storm come and uh, beat against their house. It says, the rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. 
Guys, the storms came for, for both people. It wasn't the one who was just doing the right thing or, or the one who was making the mistake. It was for all the people. And so to kind of get a better glimpse of that, I want us to put ourselves in the shoes of the people that Jesus was speaking to. Like, take yourself back to 33 AD. I'm going to help us get there. Don't you worry about that. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. You're living almost 2,000 years ago, and you're in a home like this. This is kind of the best quality photo. I don't even know if you can see that, but this is just like a, a home from that time period. There's no electricity. There's not this crazy amount of technology, and, and really, there's not even a whole lot of infrastructure. And let's just say for the sake of the story that you're some average trailer salesman, right? Uh, and so you'd probably look a little something like this. Uh, and so <laughs> I want you to just, <laughs> oh, that kind of looks like Matt. Um, no, but for the sake of the story, I want you to picture this. Picture you're living in this, this time period. What's the most destructive thing that could happen to your city? What's the most destructive thing that could happen to your town? No, they didn't have nukes back then. They didn't have bombs. There wasn't this, this crazy global infrastructure where it could collapse and leave them with nothing. Guys, the storm was the ultimate force of the day back then. You know, storms, like Jesus is, is saying, this is the worst thing that could happen. It's going to happen to both people. The storms would come and they would test the foundation that the, the builders had built on. And the same is true with us. The reality is when storms come into our life, they reveal our foundation. You know, these builders might have had great looking homes. They might have had like, like awesome looking homes that to the outside were like, oh, this is great. This is what I want my home to look like, my life to look like. But ultimately, when the trials came, the foundation was all that mattered. You know, the, the foolish builder's home was left in ruin while the wise builders stood firm. And what's interesting is the Bible doesn't say, like, you're going to kind of get some trials in your life or, you know, some may experience this, some might. Jesus actually promises us that we will all face trials in life. Check this out in John chapter 16, verse 33. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart because I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. So we will face trouble in life. That is, that is not kind of a, a question up in the air. That is a certainty. It's a fact that we will face trials in life. But what's amazing is what Jesus says, that we can take heart. We can trust in him. We can trust in him that, that he has overcome the, the biggest storm of all. Like if we think hardships in this life are, are bad, Think about sin, the, the death that we experience from sin that is final, that separates us from God for eternity. What's amazing is Jesus has overcome that, and we can have hope because of that truth. And that's what he's saying here. You know, when we live in light of the truth that this verse has, you know, it completely changes how we approach the hard things that we battle in life, the storms that we have in our life. And so what do these storms look like? Like, what does it look like to have a storm come into your life? Maybe it's an unexpected injury that you have that kind of keeps you from doing the stuff that you want in life. Maybe it's, it's a, a losing a loved one or, or going through a season of anxiety. I know midterms, it's, it's a time where there's a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. Uh, it could even be conflict with family and friends. It could be really the, any hard thing that we're going through that, that is just tough, right? The, the storms in our life. I want to share briefly just about a time when I, I really experienced this. It was the morning of September 20th, 2019, I got one of the worst phone calls that I think I've ever had in my entire life. Um, I got a, a phone call and I, I learned the news that one of my best friends, uh, he was a fraternity brother, he was a guy in my pledge class, he'd taken his life the night before. Uh, and, and honestly, it was one of the, the hardest, most heartbreaking, uh, uprooting, like confusing times that I, I've ever experienced. I, I had no idea what I was going to do. I, had, I was so confused and wanted answers and, and, and wanted peace about this. And uh, at the time, I'd been walking with God for about a year. And I, I had a really, I really had a decision to make. You know, uh, I could go with what I wanted to do and just turn back to the old ways of coping with hard things. Uh, or I could turn to God's word and, and turn to the truth that he promises and gives through it. And so I, I ended up turning to God and going to his word and seeing and being reminded of the peace and the promise that God has for the life that we can have hope in. And it was amazing to see that God used that, not only to strengthen my faith in that time. And I know that's like super counter what you think would 
happen. But through that time, I grew more in my faith than I think I had at any time before. You know, I, I was relying on promises like James 1. We learned about a couple weeks ago how God grows us through trials. I learned about verses like this where, where Jesus promises us peace in times of trouble. And it was amazing to see that. And I know, guys, we all have stories of the storms in our life that might impact us. And so if we want to endure those storms, we have to build our life on the things that last. So the second truth we learn about from this parable is that we will all face storms. So lastly, the third truth that we're going to learn about is that we must build our lives on Jesus. We must build our lives on Jesus. So as we've seen, the difference between these two builders was in their foundation. You know, one, they both experienced storms, and two, they, they, they built on, one built on the rock and one built on the sand. Ultimately, the foolish builder's house was the one that collapsed. And so what Jesus is saying through this is that we need to be like the wise builder. We need to build our foundation on the rock. So uh, another great verse that talks about this is, is from Paul in his letter to the Corinthians. He says this, he says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Christ Jesus. Guys, that's pretty cut and dry. I love when the Bible is like straightforward like that. I mean, it's just, it, it plainly tells us that the rock, the foundation we need to be building our life upon is Christ Jesus. You know, so it, what that says is, you know, we can't go to these other things, these temporary things in the world. We have to put Jesus at the forefront of our life, at the foundation of our life. There's no other way. And so how do we do that? You know, it's easy for me to sit up here and be like, oh, well, you guys just, you know, make him the foundation. Come on, Hubler, what are you doing? But I'm not going to do that, except for you, Hubler. No, it's easy to say this from up front. It's easy to say this about our lives, like, I want to do that. But what does that actually look like? And, and so as I was thinking of, like, you know, what's a simple, easy-to-remember thing? Maybe I could tie some sort of logo into it so that you guys could remember Ah, I was just racking my brain. So I decided to come up with one of on my own. This is like, you know, patent pending. It's, it's something I came up with. It's just do it. Just do it. Yeah, you could write that down. Take a picture if you want. You're not going to see this around very much. <clears throat> I'm just kidding. But just do it is essentially what Jesus is saying as the message of this parable. He says, just do God's word. You know, if we want to build our lives with Jesus as the foundation, we have to do God's word. Again, let's look back at both builders in the story. You know, both were hearers of God's word. It said both had heard Jesus speak. Both had heard God speak. And one, the wise builder, decided to apply God's word by building it on a solid foundation. The other one was foolish and just kind of went about his day building that house. And, and we see the impact of that. You know, I think it's important to note that the, the builder made the effort the wise builder made the effort. He took the initiative to dig down deep. You know, that's a lot of times what we're going to have to do if we want to apply God's word. We have to put initiative and effort into it. And, you know, it's easy to fall into this, this thing. Like, I, I think it's, it's super easy, and this is something that, that I've experienced, to just check off boxes. You know, you come to Stumo night. Maybe you read your Bible every day. You go to church. All great things. Like, do not stop doing those things. Those are great. But we miss the point if we are just doing those things to do them. You know, we're missing the point if we're just attending Stumo and checking the box off and then going back to the same thing we were just doing before. You know, it takes applying what we're learning. It's honestly like saying this. It's like we go to, go to a, a Stumo night, we hear a, a message out of God's word, and, and it's very clearly Jesus is telling us to do something, but we're, we're ending up saying like, hey, thanks God, I believe in that, I agree with it, but I'm going to go do my own thing. Like, I'm, I'm just going to go my own way and do what I think is best. We need to be hearers and doers of the word if we want to build our life on what lasts. And so, guys, as we're thinking about this, I actually wanted to bring up Allie and hear about her experience of what that looked like for her. So why don't you guys give it up for Allie? Um, hi, y'all. I'm Allie. I wanted to tell y'all a little bit about my story of following Jesus. Um, growing up, I really wanted nothing to do with God. I wanted to live a life for myself and just follow my own agenda. Because of this, I desired to be recognized for all of my achievements. Um, flash forward to college when I dove headfirst into the party scene. I was living for the weekend, and I really fell into wanting to be seen for this really fun party girl I could be. The deeper I got into the party scene, the more I made unhealthy choices, and I was just left completely empty and broken. 
I ended up going to the Stimo Winter Conference, SMC, and I learned about how much God loved me. And let me tell you, this changed things. He loved me so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to die a gruesome death on the cross for my brokenness and my sin so I could have a personal relationship with him. God knew all the wrongs I committed, my track record, and all of my sin, and he still claimed me as his daughter and showed me his unconditional fatherly love. I had absolutely nothing figured out, let me tell you. I would never read a page of the Bible. I never once prayed. I didn't have any questions answered. But understanding what Jesus did for me was enough for me to commit my life to follow him. Once following Jesus, I really realized the importance of reading the Bible and building my life on Jesus. The more time I spent reading God's word, the more God radically transformed my life and the more I learned about God's character. God has redeemed my past struggles, given me lifelong friendships, and completely changed the trajectory of my life to bring glory to him. If you haven't yet, I just really want to encourage you to make that decision to follow Jesus. I promise you won't regret it. Thank you. How awesome. Yeah, give it up for Allie. That's great. I, I love that. So guys, as we wrap up, I just want to pose this question to you guys uh, to think about, to take away from tonight. What is your foundation? You know, what is your foundation? What have you been building your life on? And I, I want to take the, a chance first to encourage you guys. Be, by being here, you are already taking a step to hear God's word. That is amazing. Like, that's something you should uh, continue to do, continue to build on. But now, as we leave, how are we going to respond? You know, again, same as what Jesus was posing to the people as he, as he closed Sermon on the Mount. How are, are you going to respond? Are we going to kind of take what we've heard and, and then go back to our lives, go back to the things uh, that we were doing before where we might have been building on the sand and building on these temporary things? Or, or are we going to take what God is saying and, and apply that to our life and to seek to apply what he teaches us to our life? Now, if you already are doing that, I'm, I'm super encouraged by that. I want to continue or encourage you to continue doing that. Uh, that's amazing. And so just to give us a couple of practical applications of what you guys can be doing, I would say the first step is read God's word, read the Bible. Uh, now, I, I would say a lot of us are probably doing that or investigating that or building up a good rhythm in that. Uh, and I would just encourage you to continue doing that and then now seek to apply what that's saying. You know, maybe that looks like writing out applications uh, in your Bible or in, an, in a journal next to it of how you're going to take what you've read and put that into your life that day. Uh, the next application would just be bring others in. Bring other people in. We have an amazing community here of people in the same position, students in college looking to investigate and grow in their walk with God. Like that's how I would describe what we do here at Sumo, and it's an amazing opportunity for you to just jump into fellowship with other people. You know, it's so much harder to just sit down and read something and put it in your head, say like, I'm going to do this. But it's so much easier to, to turn to someone and say like, hey, Matt, dude, I just read this today. I want, I want to put this into my life. Can you help me do that? That's, that's a great way that we can grow in applying God's word to our life. The last one, and boy, you saw it coming. Go to Kaleo. <laughs> Sorry, that got a little loud. <laughs> go to Kaleo. Uh, guys, I work for Stumo. I'm obviously a little biased. But man, it is by far the best way you can invest your time in applying God's word. If you, if you want to do what we talked about tonight at Stumo, go to Kaleo. You will experience that. If you have the heart to grow and do these things, Kaleo is the best place to do it. We hear, we hear it get called this all the time, but it's a powder keg. You know, it's, it's like you can go there and it just explodes your faith if you're taking the initiative to apply God's word. And so I would say, Take the chance to do that. Matt's going to explain more about Kaleo and what that might look like for you after this. But guys, to leave us off, building is fun. I, I want to encourage you that in that building our lives should be awesome. But at the end of the day, we have to consider what we are building our lives on. It is the most important thing about us. And so I encourage you guys to take steps to be hearers and doers of God's word and ultimately build your life on what lasts. So I'm going to go ahead and close this in prayer. Uh, God, thank you so much for this time. God, thank you for uh, just the students taking the step to be hearers of your word. God, I pray that you would just uh, spur us on to be doers as well. Lord, that we would just take what you're teaching us and, and apply that to our lives. Lord, allow us to, to read that in God's word. Allow us to bring others into that. And uh, ultimately, God, I, I pray that uh, we would have a lot of students go to Kaleo and, and look to do that with their summer. Uh, God, I thank you so much for this group, and I just pray 
uh, for the rest of the week and the rest of the semester, God, that we would continue to seek you uh, and continue to be hearers and doers of your word. Mm -hmm.